What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be addressing the claim that I've heard absolutely everywhere in YouTube comments, on Twitter, etc. People are saying that the Solstice of Heroes armor grind is just too much. It's too long, it's unfun, but do they have a legitimate point or are they simply overreacting? That's what I wanted to talk about. And so, let's get started. But first, there's a link in the description down below. Clicking it automatically applies a discount to any Astro product while helping the channel. Sounds like a win-win to me. Alright, yes, I've been seeing people everywhere complaining about the Solstice grind. But again, do they have a point? Are they overreacting? Well, the first thing I want to address, because I know I've already got comments about it, even though we just started the video, because people rush down there, because why would you listen? to someone else's opinion when you could just call them dumb. Come on, guys. But seriously, the main counterpoint of this whole thing is the time limit. I mean, Bungie gave us basically all of August to do this Solstice of Hero grind, so even if it is a little on the grindy side, we have so much time that counteracts a lot of the point. In fact, that is a very legitimate point because many people who are going after the Solstice Hero now, myself included, are kind of artificially increasing the amount of perceived grind. 10 Gambit matches don't seem so bad when you play, you know, three or four a day. They seem a lot worse when you play all 10 in a single sitting, trust me. So that is a definite counterpoint to the point of the grind, is simply the time limit. However, I would say to that counterpoint that Bungie could give us a month, six months, a year. It doesn't matter necessarily how long of a time frame they give people to complete the grind. If the grind's inherently unfun, like, does it matter? If it's a year to complete, but it sucks every hour you're doing it, that's still a problem regardless of the time frame. And I think that's another very important piece of the puzzle here. It's not just about can you get it done, it's about when you're doing it, is it fun, is it worthwhile? Does this feel like an actual event that changes gameplay when you're doing Destiny 2, or do you simply just have a checklist of things you gotta do before the time expires? So let's talk about that. The grind itself. Is it fun, is it manageable, or is it absolutely tedious? Well, a lot of those things are on the absolutely tedious level. I'm thinking 25 patrols. Now that's something that literally anyone can do. It's not about skill, it's not about anything like that, it's just a pure time constraint. And when you're doing it, it's not very fun, let's be honest. Whereas if you are doing Gambit, some people may hate Gambit, of course, but there are a lot of intense moments, especially if you are doing Gambit Prime and stuff, and it can be a fun, enjoyable experience. 25 patrols, not so much. Now I did mention differentiating gameplay. Does this event feel like an actual event? And when it comes to elemental orbs, it actually does you are playing a bit differently when you're going after those elemental orbs, especially if they are matching the daily element and you're getting those elemental bonuses. Normally, when you're playing a strike, for example, you're just trying to complete it as quickly as possible. But if you've got one of the challenges where you're specifically going for elemental orbs, you're likely going to kill enemies that you would otherwise have ridden past on your sparrow, for example. If you do get the elemental bonus going, it does change how you play. For example, if it's a solar day, you get the solar bonus and you have the flames spitting out from around you, you're actually going to run into groups of enemies with a shotgun out, play a lot more aggressively than you maybe otherwise would, stand right next to the boss and try to plug him with that shotgun and try to get that damage from your elemental buff on him. It also seems Seems like when you activate your super, when these buffs are on, they last longer so you can kind of chain those orbs even more so. That is sweet and that is great. That whole aspect of the elemental orbs is a good thing about Salsas of Heroes and it makes playing those 10 required strikes, for example, 
a lot easier to do because you have a little bit of extra power, you're playing a little bit differently, it doesn't feel as maybe monotonous as it would be without these elemental orbs present. However, while that's all great, the problem is that not all of the requirements encourage that type of gameplay. For example, I've mentioned the 10 strikes, and that's all it is. It's just 10 strikes. And that has extremely little, if not basically no, requirements for getting orbs past like two strikes and you'll get all those requirements done. So the, for the last eight strikes, you aren't playing differently, you are just grinding, 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 and you're running through that as quickly as possible. Funny enough, the strikes that you have to do are a lot more fun in the second half of the armor quest when you're going from blue to purple. Why? Because you don't have 10 strikes to do. In fact, you don't have any requirement on strikes, you are just doing orbs. So you're in the same activity that you did for the first half of the armor and you're playing completely differently. You are going out of your way to kill enemies, you are getting those orbs, you're utilizing those bonuses, and like I said earlier, that feels great but I feel like there's not necessarily enough of that. I would have much preferred more requirements that had to do with collecting orbs, perhaps getting those bonuses and getting kills while in those elemental daily bonuses and stuff like that. Stuff that actually made you play differently rather than just so much emphasis on just doing a checklist of things that often you get the orb requirements done and then you go back to grinding like you would be grinding without this event even in the game. That I do kind of have a problem with. I would much rather have instead of, you know, 10 Gambit matches, you have no requirements on the Gambit matches, but then you have, you know, 1,500 orbs generated in Gambit matches. Again, that's going to actually make you play Gambit a little bit differently and make things not feel as grindy and as tedious. So that is an aspect I feel like Bungie kind of dropped the ball on. Too much checklist stuff and not enough stuff involving the cool new feature that you're adding with this event. But there's one other thing that I think has been brought up a few times and people are getting somewhat annoyed at, and that is the lack of choice. We are actually introduced to a pretty darn good choice in the first armor set, and that is 10 Crucible or Gambit matches. Now that's actually a really good idea because if you hate Crucible, but you don't mind Gambit, that's gonna feel so much less grind, you're gonna have so much more fun in that activity than if you're forced to do something you hate. And some people, especially with stuff like PvP and Gambit, those are things that sometimes people hate. Like they can't stand PvP, they can't stand Gambit, so giving people a little bit of a choice is fantastic. And I wish that was done maybe a little bit more. For example, 25 patrols on Titan if you're a Warlock. Why isn't it Titan or somewhere else? Titan or Mars? Just giving people a little bit of choice and flexibility because as it turned out, if you are a warlock and you got Titan, you're a little bit screwed compared to some other people because there's only two public areas to get patrols. Whereas if you had Io, there's three, so there's more patrols you can get. And also, it's kind of funny that, like I've said, we see this option in the first armor set between Crucible and Gambit, but then by the second armor set, there's no choice at all. It's just Gambit. So I really do think offering a little bit more choice when it comes to these requirements, you know, instead of 10 strikes, it's 10 strikes or, you know, 25 daily missions, how about? And then you actually have a little bit of skill requirement and testing to figure out which path is actually faster. Maybe you can switch between them because it would be a point system, let's say 20 points in total, strikes give two points, daily missions gave one point, something like that. So if you got super bored of strikes, you could go to daily missions. I'm just saying give the player a little bit more options when it comes to their grind and a system like that would feel better with multiple characters. That's another thing I want to talk about with multiple characters. Truth be told, it's really not too bad to get your first character up to the legendary armor. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit annoying and honestly a little bit unfun, but it's going to be doable. But if you have three characters, like a lot of us players out there have, it just gets more annoying. Again, this is not a question of doability. Like I said at the beginning with the time constraint, you can 100% get all of them done. It's just a question of, are you having fun during this grind? And 
30 gambit matches, or if you do it twice, 60 gambit matches over the course of a month if you don't like gambit is kind of a lot to ask. I tweeted out, and I think this would be a great idea, that okay, for every character you complete, it lowers the requirements by 20%. So when you're on your last character, you don't have to do 10 strikes, you have to do six strikes, for example. Like, you already proved you can do strikes. Do you really need to do 10 three times in a row? Do you know what I mean? And I think that would actually be a really nice thing for those people who are running multiple characters. There is also a bit of an issue with some of the requirements involving the EAZ. The EAZ is actually a cool new area. I like it. I didn't like it at first actually, but once you kind of learn the map, once you learn how to get to the rooftops and stick to the rooftops and keep your engagements kind of up there and then you can find more entry points to those buildings and so on, it's actually a pretty fun activity. I do definitely enjoy it and the space feels fresh and new. There's so much more verticality than we usually get with areas in Destiny, so that's all good. But the problem is that for the blue to the purple armor, you need to get 50 EAZ chests and 100 mini bosses. Those should be reversed, obviously. I can't believe Bungie completely like didn't see this happening when they were designing these requirements because you get the chests way before you get the mini bosses, so now everyone's backing out halfway through, and that can create problems. But can you blame them? Like, this is so much grind, they just want to get it done. And another problem is that you actually have to be involved with these mini boss kills. It's not just the total mini boss kills of your team, which it also should be, because if you're running over to shoot a mini boss and your team kills them just before you get there, Sometimes that won't count towards your mini boss count and that could be extremely frustrating So like that that's an, an unnecessary thing as well By the way, if you are gonna leave halfway through try to get a three-man group Don't screw over other people or at least at least extend the grind a tiny bit for yourself Kill the end boss and then leave for the chests But again that whole issue doesn't need to be an issue if Bungie just switches the mini bosses with the chests. So it's again a hundred chests 50 mini bosses problem literally solved. So do I feel like this is the grind to end all grinds? No, absolutely not. Because again of that time limit and because all of these activities are pretty accessible, like, except for when it comes to mass working armor, but you really don't need to do that. When it comes to getting to legendary, it's just doing things that everyone has access to really. You know, there isn't a requirement to do raids or something like that where people sometimes just wouldn't be able to do that. You can do Gambit, you can do Crucible, you can do Strikes. You may not enjoy it, but you can do them all. So I don't think this is the worst grind in the world, but as I've kind of went through in the video, I feel like things could have been done better, right? And there, there's a spectrum. Not everything has to be the best thing in the world or literally suck so hard, right? There is a spectrum in between there. And I feel like Souls of Heroes 2019 definitely falls within that spectrum. There's a lot of things that they could have done better. I would have loved more emphasis on these elemental orbs and these bonuses rather than just, yeah, 10 strikes, good luck, dummy, right? Like that's what it feels like and it should be, you know, a, a thousand orbs in strikes and that m makes you again play differently. That would have felt less like a grind, that would have felt less tedious because it would have been a bit different. But I want to end this video with a huge positive about this whole event and that is, I believe, the Armor 2.0 system. Aside from the fact that that means all of the rest of your armor is becoming totally useless and the best set of armor is the Solstice armor and there's no reason to get anything else because it's the only one that upgrades, the fact that they have this massive carrot at the end of the stick where armor 2.0 is a desirable thing and if you do the grind you will be rewarded with a practical good reward, that's why we're talking about this. That's, that's the only reason I'm making this video is because Everyone wants to do this grind and everyone is now kind of talking about it and there's so much buzz in the community. If Bungie hadn't had that, and they could have easily just had a set of armor, it's masked worked, and then going into Shadowkeep, you have to earn all new armor. There would be nowhere near the amount of buzz and excitement and people doing this grind. So that was a very good thing. 
And that's something that I feel like all events in Destiny 2 need to aspire to, have actual legitimate rewards. We saw this sometimes before with the Revelry and the Arbalest, like an exotic weapon is a great example as well. Again, have actual legitimate rewards that are gonna make people excited and participate in these events. If you don't, if it's just cosmetics, a lot of people really won't care. So that is something also very positive about this event. But what are your thoughts on this event? Are you having fun? Are you tired of the grind already? Do you think you're gonna get all three characters done or are you just gonna pick one character because the grind is too annoying? Let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, found this discussion interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickKak that's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.